What's the best link to share your podcast? Listen to find out. Thank you for joining me for the Audacity to Podcast. I'm Daniel J. Lewis. Whether you're a guest on someone else's podcast, you're promoting your latest episode on social networks, or you're making marketing materials for your podcast, you might be wondering which link should you share for your podcast? Should it be the episode webpage, the website homepage, your Apple podcast link, your Spotify link, some other podcast app link? Should you tell them to go find your podcast in their favorite podcast app? Should you send them to your RSS feed? Should you send them to a YouTube video or a YouTube channel or a third-party landing page like followthepodcast.com or Linktree? And these are just some of the options you might be considering. To address this properly, you first need to decide whether to share your whole podcast or only a specific episode. So that's how I'll divide this episode to discuss and share some ideas with you, is sharing your whole podcast and sharing your specific episode. Follow along in the show notes inside of your app, a tap or swipe away, or go to theaudacitytopodcast.com slash best link. I'd also really appreciate it if you find this episode helpful please share it with someone else. Whether you see that they ask this question in social media groups, you can post this as the answer, or you just want to share this episode out on your Twitter or Facebook or anything like that. I'd really appreciate it. Those share links and the URL to share are at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash best link. So first, your overall podcast. Share your podcast link for general promotion to new audiences. By general promotion, I mean when you're telling someone to follow your podcast and you're not promoting a specific episode. For example, when you get to mention your podcast on another podcast, if you're not already talking about the same thing as one of your episodes. It might be in your digital and print marketing materials, like business cards, banners, ads, swag, and such. Or when you're making any other kind of general promotion for your show as a whole. Not for a specific episode, but the whole show, your podcast. The podcast is the whole thing with many episodes, and then episodes are the individual episodes. So I suggest the following guidelines for the scenarios you'll typically face. Number one, promote your website when you need simplicity. Your podcast needs its own domain. I've done an episode previously about why your podcast needs its own domain and how to use that most effectively, so get that link in the notes for this episode, a tap or swipe away, or at theaudacitypodcast.com slash best link. So when you have your own domain, make sure it's branded to your podcast and points to a page that has multiple follow options. Most importantly, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, something popular for Android like Google Podcasts or subscribe on android.com and your RSS feed URL. It would be best for the page to detect the person's type of device and automatically show or hide links appropriately. For example, hiding Apple Podcasts from Android devices, since there's no Apple Podcasts app for Android. At least, not yet. And I still, I still keep holding out hope. I really think it's coming. Maybe this year? I'm not putting any money on it like James Cridlin does, but I keep thinking this is going to be the year we'll have Apple Podcasts for Android. But we don't yet. So you shouldn't show Apple Podcast links to Android users, but instead show Google Podcasts or subscribe on Android or something like that that works on Android devices. And then doing the converse for Apple devices, where you're showing Apple Podcasts, but hiding the Android-only options. Doing this does require some complicated back-end code, so the easiest solution I recommend for you is the followthepodcast.com page you get when you track your podcast with the My Podcast Reviews service that I created for you, just go to mypodcastreviews.com to sign up or go to followthepodcast.com to see how that specific feature works. And one of the things that you'll especially want to look at there, and I also put the image here in the notes for this episode, is a little animation that I show where you can see how the page would look differently on different kinds of devices and how it hides or shows certain icons, and it even renames one of the icons, like the Apple Podcasts button is renamed to iTunes on Windows, because it is still iTunes on Windows, unfortunately. And when that's updated to be Apple Podcasts on Windows, then that page will switch to, say, Apple Podcasts on Windows, and eventually, same thing for Android. But you can check that out and see how some of the icons show or hide, depending on what kind of device is looking at it. 
And you can see also on the page, followthepodcast.com, you can see what options show for what devices. So you can build that kind of thing yourself or use followthepodcast.com, which is included with my podcast reviews. You don't have to pay extra to get that feature. It's just included for every podcast you track. Check it out. Sign up. There's a free trial, mypodcastreviews.com. Now, if possible, don't actually link to your RSS feed if you display a plain RSS option, which I think is still a pretty good option, but linking to it might be a little confusing. Some people might know to right-click in order to copy the link, but how do you do that easily on a mobile device? Many people don't know that you can tap to hold to copy a URL, and some browsers might not even allow that. So instead, consider displaying the feed URL, or even better, make the link automatically copy the URL to their clipboard when they tap or click the link. Now you can get that on the followthepodcast.com page. So if you want to see an example of that, go to my own page, followthepodcast.com slash audacity. And when you're on that page below the icons, there's a link that says, or click here to copy the feed URL. When you tap or click on that, you'll see a little thing will just appear next to it to say copied. Now go anywhere else and paste. And you'll see that it pastes my podcast RSS feed URL instead of one of the other links or instead of opening anything. So I can easily then paste that into another podcast app. So that's something that you could do for your potential audience to make it easier for them to manually subscribe if they prefer that manual subscription option, which I think is still good to include. Whether you create this multi option page for yourself or let another service create it for you. This is the single page you share when you need a simple call to action, like when you're a guest on another podcast or on your marketing materials. That could be a typed domain or a QR code, and it could be in conversations when you're somewhere and you say, yeah, check out my podcast at something, something, something dot com and similar context to that. It's essentially go here to listen. Then you're delegating the details and options to the next step instead of giving them all in that initial call to action. You just say, go here. And then when they go there, then they get their additional options and instructions and anything else that's relevant. So promote your website when you need simplicity. Number two, promote multiple links when the person has the mental and visual space to choose. When people visit your podcast landing page, like I described in the previous point, they have the margin to consider their options and tap or click on what's best for them. You don't want to overwhelm them with options, which is why it's important to show only the options that work on their devices, like you get with the followthepodcast.com feature from my podcast reviews. And there are contexts where you can promote those multiple options instead of only a single page. For example, on your website homepage, you don't have to have only a single button. You could try it. Maybe that pops up with multiple options. But then that pop-up needs to have multiple options. It could also be on your episode web pages where you have multiple subscribe and follow options there. In your email newsletter, that's a good place where you can say, if you're on Android, click this. If you're on iOS, click that. Or if you prefer other apps, click this. Something like that. It could even be on social network posts. Each of these places might give you enough space to include multiple links with their appropriate labels. Now, as an example of what I mean for that, and you might want to look at the show notes for this to read it and see it, but I'll read it to you. Here's an example tweet that I might post. Learn how to start and grow your own podcast by following my podcast, The Audacity to Podcast. And then I have a list. Apple Podcasts, colon, the link. Spotify, colon, the link. Google Podcasts, colon, the link. More options, colon, then it's my followthepodcast.com link. This message is still short enough to fit in a tweet. Just remember that some platforms like Facebook might embed a widget or a card for the first URL as a sort of preview for it. That's great for single URL posts, but it could be confusing for multi-URL posts like this. So if that happens, after you publish, you can usually click a remove the preview option or something like that from the post, so then there is no preview or embedded link or anything like that with the post. It's just your links inside of your message. And number three, rotate links in short-lived contexts. If you post often on social networks with short-lived messages, such as Twitter, then you could consider promoting each major platform separately. 
This also increases your chances that the platform will reshare your promotion because they like promoting things that promote themselves, not their competitors. Here's a sample template that you could use for your own posts. Start with benefit by following my podcast, podcast name, on podcast app with your device, and then the app link. So for example, with the Audacity to Podcast, I might say, learn how to start and grow your own podcast by following my podcast, the Audacity to Podcast, on Apple Podcasts, and that's an at mention right there, so at Apple Podcasts, with your iPhone, and then it's my Apple Podcast link. Now note that I lead with the benefit, not with, are you on an iPhone? Or not with looking for a new podcast or follow my podcast? No, lead with the benefit. If you post a message like this, Even if someone without an Apple device sees that message, they can still see the benefit your podcast provides, especially if you lead with the benefit in your post, and they can copy the title of your podcast to search their own podcast app. Yeah, it's not all that great, but the other thing they might do is they simply reply to your post asking for a link for their preferred app, and then you can reply to them and give that specific link. Just please don't tell them, oh yeah, find me in the app, here's the title. No, you find that link. If you don't have that link handy, find it for them and give it to them so you're providing that value and engaging them. I suggest you post links like this no more than once or twice a day, but even less if you're not already posting multiple other non-linking messages every day. You could use a publishing tool like Meet Edgar to schedule and repost these messages at random times. So You don't always end up promoting the same thing at the same time on the same day of every week. Like, oh, Tuesday is Apple Podcast Day. No, it doesn't have to be Apple Podcast Day. Maybe it's Apple Podcast Day this week, and next week it's Google Podcasts, and the week after that it's Spotify, and then after that it's something else. And it might be on different days of the week. You can even mix this in with your other messages that I talked about in number two that promote your top platforms. So you have your messages where it's containing four different links, and then you have the other messages that focus on one particular link during the week at different times of the week. So that's for your top level podcast promotion. When you're promoting your podcast as a whole, general promotion to new audiences. For episode specific promotion, I recommend you share your episode webpage. When you want to encourage listening to or watching a specific episode, then promote that episode's own link. Generally, the best link to promote is your episode's webpage with its own embedded episode player that will work on anyone's device, computer, mobile device, Android, iPhone, anything, even Linux. They'll go to your website and they can press play. Visit website, press play. That's what your calls to action really need to be as simple as that visit website, press play. And then if you have high quality show notes or an article on that same webpage, the visitor can potentially even get the information they want from you. And that's the important part, not how they get it, but where they get it from. You want them to get that information from you. They can get it more quickly when it's there in writing, or they could be further convinced on the value of your episode and convinced to listen to the episode based on what they see just glancing through the content in its written form. In most internet contexts, the length and branding of the URL don't actually matter anymore because it's usually automatically shortened or even hidden. But in spoken contexts, like if you're a guest on another podcast to talk about the same topic you covered in a past episode, I recommend having a keyword-based redirect on your own domain. For example, If you had me on your podcast to talk about this very subject and my episode provides additional relevant value beyond our conversation, then I might say, I covered this in a lot more detail in my episode about it at theaudacitytopodcast.com slash best link. By the way, that is the link for this episode. So please go there if you want to read and see some of these things that I've shown and you want to share this episode out with anyone else. So sharing your episode is actually easier than sharing your top-level podcast because all you need to do is send them to your webpage for that episode. And I do highly recommend, primarily for this reason, that every episode of yours have its own webpage on your own website. That gives you a link that you can then share whenever you want to promote that specific episode. Is there a better way? 
Well, yes, there is. Coming soon. Podcasting 2.0 will, of course, provide a better method for this. Within the Podcasting 2.0 project, we're working on a new style of follow links called Fast Follow. This would allow a Podcasting 2.0 podcast app to use your camera to scan a QR code or maybe even a plain text URL on a page and jump straight to that podcast inside the same app and without leaving the app. You might have experienced this same kind of thing at conferences, like Podcast Movement does this, where people have QR codes on their badges. If you scan the QR code with your normal camera app on your phone, it probably opens your browser to a page about that person. But if you scan the QR code with the conference app, it either takes you directly to his or her profile inside the app, or it might instantly connect you with each other make you friends with each other, put you on each other's contacts list or anything like that, or share your contact information with each other. That's brilliant. And that's the same kind of fast simplicity we're bringing to podcast follow links. You would scan a URL or a QR code with your podcast app, and then you'd be taken straight to that podcast inside of your app without ever leaving your app. And all you'd have to do is tap follow from there. Wouldn't that be great? Scan a QR code, tap follow. Make it that super easy. That's so fast for following a podcast. That's why it's called Fast Follow. Now, Fast Follow is still under development, and I'm advocating for some ways to make it so easy that you wouldn't have to regenerate any QR codes or update any web pages or anything like that. There could be something in the URL, so you could generate a QR code off the URL with a special code that's in the URL itself. Or what I'm advocating for is some other options that you can include on the web page or in some of the back end code with a plugin or maybe a service would already do this that would do the same kind of thing without actually having to change the URL but that's still under development and i'm hoping that that will be in the next phase or so of podcasting 2.0 <sighs> take a deep breath if you're overwhelmed here's what you need to do and it's simple i understand yes this can be daunting so many options, so many things to consider, maybe some potential back-end technological things that might be confusing, might not even be an option for you on your website. That's why I made this simple for you. With the followthepodcast.com feature, you get included when you track your podcast social proof with My Podcast Reviews. So go to mypodcastreviews.com, sign up for the free trial if you're not already a member, and you get a clean and simple page that smartly shows and hides options depending on your visitor's device. Plus, you can customize the URL so it's easily speakable. For example, I can say follow the podcast to get every episode automatically through followthepodcast.com slash audacity. Note, that's really speakable. Follow the podcast at followthepodcast.com slash, and then it's what comes after the slash that you can customize. And it doesn't matter capitalization or anything like that. You can put numbers in it if you need to or want to, but it makes it really easy. Or you can redirect to that, like I have the audacity to podcast.com slash follow redirects to follow the podcast.com slash audacity and these pages will even support fast follow when that podcasting 2.0 standard is finalized so i really really recommend that you try this out even if this is all that you use my podcast reviews for is to get these pages for your podcast the follow the podcast.com page for your podcast there's even a love the podcast.com page which focuses on ratings and reviews but here we're talking about following So you can get that, and that alone, I think, is worth it for you. You can track multiple podcasts with the service. Try it out. There's a free trial for you over at mypodcastreviews.com, and I've got the link to that in the notes for this episode. And speaking of the notes for this episode, I mentioned a few things that I think you might want to see, and especially to copy, like the templates for different messages that you could post on social networks and such. So I highly recommend that you go to theaudacitytopodcast.com slash best link to get that information review this that's also where you can go to share this episode with anyone else you think might benefit from this if you see anyone asking in a facebook group or anything like that hey what episode link or what link should i even share at all when i'm promoting my podcast you can send them to the audacity to podcast.com slash best link now that i've given you some of the guts and taught you some of the tools it's time for you to go start and grow your own podcast for passion and profit. I'm Daniel J. Lewis from the audacity to podcast.com. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.